welcome friends to This Is My Life. You're going to be blessed today. Our co-host Melinda Carroll is going to bring a message that will bless you and you will be more informed during this 30 minutes than you were before you started. Amen. So Melinda, <laughs> just speak what God gave you. Okay, dear. well thank you so much again, Bobby and Frank for allowing me to uh, share the Word of God. It's always an honor and I don't take it lightly. I want to encourage you right now, if you don't have your Bibles, get them or get some paper and pencil so you, that you can take notes because uh, it's really important. And I just want to encourage you today because we're going to be talking about Joseph's life lessons. And I encourage you to read the, all the chapters regarding Joseph and his life, even after we get through today, because it'll be a great encouragement to you. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Joseph is uh, an incredible uh, man of God, and he used him in, God used him in such a great and mighty way to show forth his power and uh, his grace and mercy to a people who otherwise would have perished from a famine. And, uh, but anyway, we're going to um, go, we're going to begin in Genesis 47. And this actually begins the story of Joseph. Um, his father was Israel, and Joseph was 17 years old uh, when he um, began to work out in the fields with his father and his brothers. Uh, his mother's name was Rachel. And Joseph was a dreamer, the word tells us in chapter 30. So he was a dreamer. And uh, so his father would send him out to feed and work in the flocks with his brothers. And so um, he went out there and apparently there was some bad things they were doing this one particular day because after he got back, he says he gave his father a bad report about his brothers. So um, Israel loved, it says, Joseph more than the other brothers because he was the son of his old age. And um, he made him a coat of many colors. And that coat represented royalty. It represented what God was going to do in Joseph's life in the future and the gifts that God had given him. So because of all this, his brothers hated him. They hated him. And so in verse uh Chapter 37, verse 4, it says his brothers hated him. And then jo Joseph began to have dreams. God gave him dreams. And he actually showed him through this dream what he would be doing later in life and that his brothers would be bowing down to him, actually, even his father. And so he goes and he shares this dream with his brothers and his father. And let me tell you, when he did, he set on fire the gates of hell to come against him because they hated him even the more. And it says that uh, his brothers envied him and uh, they hated him. But it says that his father pondered this in his mind. He began to ponder this and he wondered what it all meant. But even his father rebuked him for this dream that he shared. So uh, the first life lesson I want to uh go into for just a moment is that we need to use great wisdom and discernment when we begin to share what uh, with others what God has is doing in our life what whether it's a dream whether it's a vision whether it's God's plan you don't need necessarily to be sharing that with every human being <laughs> you need to use great discernment but because he shared this they hated him even more so, and then chapter 37, 13, Israel, again, he sends Joseph out one day to check on his brothers to see if they were okay and what was going out, on out there in the field. And when they saw him, all this hate, this envy, and this jealousy rose up within them. And so uh, they came up with a plan what they were going to do to him. So they strip him of his coat of many colors, and they take him and they throw him into a pit. And uh, it says that the pit had no water in it. And so um, later, a band of Ishmaelites come by. So then they come up with a brilliant idea instead of killing him, which they even had thought about killing him, murdering their own brother. This is how much hate they had in their heart toward him. But instead of doing that, they came up with another plan due to their older brother, Reuben, who said, you know, you cannot kill him. His blood will be upon our hands. So they decide to sell him, and they sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites. 
and here they took their brother away. They took him and they came in to Egypt and they end up selling him to an officer of Pharaoh named Potiphar. So Potiphar buys Joseph and he takes Joseph into his home. And it says that uh, in, in chapter 39, one through five, I want to read that. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. He was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight, and he served him. Then he made him overseer of everything, and, and all that he had he put under Joseph's authority. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that was in uh, Potiphar's house and in his field, it said. So second life lesson that I want to share today about Joseph. Joseph, even though he had been stripped of his coat, he had been treated, uh, I mean, just so evil, thrown into a pit by his own flesh and blood, and then they sold him. He maintained his integrity. He did not let a root of bitterness come into his heart and, he, and hold that. He continued to be a leader and a hard worker. He was an overseer and manager of all of Potiphar's house. So God, because of these things, God gave Joseph favor and he blessed the Egyptian's house. I want to give you the definition of favor. Favor means approval, support, liking someone or something as an act of kindness beyond what is due or usual. In other words, something that's kind of over the top. God will begin to do things for you when his favor is upon you that he doesn't do for others. You'll see it. He goes above and beyond. I mean, you, you just know when God's favor is upon you. It means to feel or show approval or preference for. And I want to give you just several scriptures briefly about God's favor. Psalm 512 says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround them as with a shield. The Living Bible says you will protect him with your shield of love. That love is a shield. Uh, that shield is a love from God, Bobby. Uh, Psalm 89, 17, For you are the glory of our strength and your favor. And in your favor, our horn shall be exalted. Praise God. The Living Bible says our power will be based on your favor. And then the last one I want to share with you is found in Proverbs 3, 3 and 4. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. You bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and esteem in the sight of God and man. And that's what Joseph did. He did not get bitter. He, he was determined he was going to keep moving forward to be the best he could be, even though he was in a terrible situation, <laughs> at, you know, being sold by his brothers. Okay, in Genesis 39, here we come into the story of the part of a testing time, another testing time for Joseph, a big test. As he was working in Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife had eyes for Joseph. And so Potiphar's wife desired to have sexual relations with Joseph. And she kept trying to uh, convince him to be with her, not once, but over and over. But Joseph refused to sin against God. And in verse 11 and 12, it says, But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work, that none of the men of the house were in the house that particular day. No other men. So she called out and she began to, it said she screamed with a loud voice, uh, you know, that uh, basically that he was trying to take advantage of her. And uh, so uh, it says, uh, 
the, and then the Hebrew, the, the people ran into the room and he says, look what he's done. This Hebrew has been sent to mock us. He came here and tried to lie with me. And, uh, and that's why she screamed out with a loud voice and says, here, I have his garment. She grabbed his garment. Listen, <laughs> this woman was no dummy. She had a plan. She was going to try to take him down and out because he was refusing to be with her. So she, he, she shows the men of the house the garment and says, and then later when her husband got home, she says, here's the garment. This is what Joseph has done. So what happens? Potiphar sends Joseph to prison. He sends him to prison for something he's not guilty of. He's innocent, but he goes to prison. The third life lesson I want to share with you. We need to be very wise who we have relationships with and our surroundings with people, especially those of the opposite sex. Now, I want to tell you, as a young Christian, I was told this by people in the ministry right off the top. And here's what they said. You need to guard yourself. Don't ever go into a, a room with a man where there's not other people present and even women. Don't go behind cl closed doors. Don't do that. Don't be alone with other uh, people like that. Let me tell you something. If you're not wise and you are not paying attention to what's going on, Satan will use these things as an occasion to try to set a trap for you. I know I've, I've, I've had it, him try to set traps, but I learned this lesson, so I avoided them. Amen? Uh, we, 2 Corinthians 6, 14, it says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what do the righteous and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship does darkness have with light? Joseph's moral purity cost him something. It cost him greatly. He went to prison for that. Yet because Joseph obeyed God and he, God turned that situation around and he prospered him even in the prison. He prospered him. His moral purity was actually the gateway to a great blessing in his life because he refused to bow. Amen. He refused to give in to Potiphar's wife. So you know, I had this certain individual one time in my life and, and, you know, he kept saying, well, let's go to lunch. Let's go to lunch. There was no way I was going to lunch with somebody, even though he was a coworker without other people in the company going with us. You know what I'm saying? And I just kept saying, well, no, or let's get so-and-so, but it never happened. I just never did it because you can just sense when something's not right. If you're really tuning into your spirit, you'll sense it. Okay. In chapter 39, 21, but the Lord was with Joseph. He showed him mercy and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And because of this gift of interpreting dreams, he ends up telling the butler and the baker a dream that they had. He interpreted it for him. And I want you to know that gift proved out to be right on because later when they came before, before Pharaoh, he had told the baker that his, his head was going to be taken off. That's exactly what happened. And he told the butler he would be restored and serve Pharaoh again. And it happened just as he had said. Joseph later tells the butler, please tell Pharaoh, uh, you know, don't forget me. Tell him about this dream. Later, Pharaoh has a dream. He called all his musicians. He called all the men that he knew that could even possibly interpret this dream, and no one could. At that point, the butler finally remembers Joseph and said, Hey, I met a Hebrew. Man, he's in the prison, and he interpreted the dream for the butler and the baker. You need to call him. So that's what ends up happening. Uh, so he calls uh, uh, him to come out. He puts on, he takes a shower, he gets presentable, he changes his clothes, and they bring him before Pharaoh. And so, of course, he tells, Pharaoh tells him the dream, and he interprets that dream for Pharaoh through God's gift. Amen? And then Pharaoh says to him, in verse 30, 38, Pharaoh says, Can we find such a man as this one, a man in whom all is all the Spirit of God? Pharaoh takes off his signet ring. He puts it on Joseph's hand. He clothed him in garments of linen. And he puts a gold chain around his neck. Now here he's standing there. He's been put in a prison. Do you know how long he was in that prison? 13 years. He was 17 when he went in. He was 30 when this happened. 30 years old. 
Let me tell you, he had a chance to become discouraged, Bobby. He sure did. People nowadays, they think if God don't answer their prayer like this, that, you know, uh, they just give up or they say, I, I just don't believe it's going to happen. They give up. But he didn't. He also had him re ride with him through the city in a second chariot. And he began to tell everybody, bow the knee. People in the city began to bow their knee to Joseph because Pharaoh wanted them to know he's in charge of everything I own. <laughs> what amazing story. So he set him over all the land of Egypt. He shared with uh, uh, Pharaoh this plan to store for seven years what they would need so they would have plenty through the famine. God gave him that idea. The fourth life lesson is he refused to compromise his righteousness before God. And God filled him with his wisdom. And he was bold to come out with his plan to Pharaoh about how to save the people from starvation. We need to remember that God lives on the inside of us and there's nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing impossible with God. Amen. Joseph continued to follow God and God took him from the pit to the, to the palace. Amen. As ruler. It's a wonderful story. So anyway, we go on in a chapter 42, Joseph's brothers goes to Egypt to get food and Joseph ends up revealing who he really is to his brothers. But let me tell you, he pulled several tricks on them. I think, you know, even though he forgave them, he just wanted to, them to get a little taste. And, 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 you know, they, they just, several things happen. You just need to read it for yourself. But anyway, uh, in, in chapter 45, it says, and Joseph revealed himself to his brother. They came near to him. He says, uh, and, and they couldn't believe it. They were weeping. He says, but now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years, the famine has been in the land, and there are still five years in which there will be plowing. There won't be any plowing nor harvesting. So the fifth life lesson, Joseph forgave his brothers for what they did to him. He even kissed him, Bobby. Now, you know what people can say? Oh, well, I forgive. But let me tell you something. He, he went all the way with God in this forgiveness. He kissed his brothers. He wept over them. And then his father Israel dies. And Joseph, at that point, his brothers are getting afraid. Oh, my God. Our dad's out of the picture. Now he's really going to come back and, and, you know, really punish us for what we did. But no, it said... He comforted them. Joseph reassures his brothers after his father's died, I'm going to continue to provide for you and your children. He kept taking care of them. He comforted them and he said it spoke kindly to them. Joseph rose above his circumstances with God's power. He did not let what happened to him keep him depressed, shipwrecked, saying, you know, my life is over. Look what God's, you know, what, what the enemy has done. I'm here. There's no way out. No, Joseph believed God would do exceedingly abundantly above what he had promised him and what he showed him. Amen. So he, he, God used these negative experiences to shape, to mold and to prepare Joseph to become that effective leader that he became. He used those negative things to bring it about. Joseph said in Genesis 50, 20, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this day to save many people. Amen. And I just want to say uh, that Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. The Living Bible says, and we know that all things happen to us is working for good if we love God and we're fitting into his plan. Amen. Yes. Now you need to listen to this. We got to love God, but we need to be fitting into his plan. Acts 7, 9 and 10 says, and the patriarchs becoming envious of Joseph sold him into Egypt, but God was with him and delivered him out of all his troubles. He delivered him out of all his troubles and sold Joseph into Egypt, Egypt, and he gave him favor and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and made him governor over all of Egypt and his house. So God will give you power to take your pain and he will change it and make 
a gain into it. Turn it around for you. If you, but you got to let go of things. You got to let go of unforgiveness, hatred, anything in your heart that you know that's not a God, you need to surrender it to him. In Deuteronomy 23, 5, it says, but the Lord, our God refused to listen to Balaam who was trying to curse uh, God's people. God, and he turned that curse into a blessing because the God, Lord God loves us. He turns those things that God, the enemy wants for evil around for good because God loves us. God can use whatever you've been through in your life today as building blocks to start all over again. Even if you self-inflicted your own self, even if you brought it on yourself, even if you sin and you are in prison because you are guilty, I don't care what it is. When you come and you're born again and you ask Jesus Christ to forgive you, you are a brand new creature and God will give you a brand new life if you'll allow him. Amen. 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 So, you know, these are just some uh, building blocks and some life lessons in this story of Joseph that we need to take to heart and we need to listen and be an encouragement to others who are discouraged, who think that there's no hope anymore. I've, I've, you know, nothing is ever so bad. You could never do anything so horrible that God will not forgive you if you truly repent. Isn't that right, Bobby? That's right. That's right. If you repent from your heart, God will forgive you and he will restore you into a right relationship with him. Yes. Yes, he will. And you know, every day I, I want to encourage the body of Christ. Now, one of the things we should be praying every day is God, I thank you. And I, I do this. God, I thank you that your favor is upon my life and my family's life. And wherever I go, Father, I'm finding favor with people. And you know, uh, we need to look for that favor in situations. If there's favor there, God's in it. But let me just say this. If favor's not there, he's not in it. There's a story even in the Bible where Jacob, you know, Laban tricked him so many times and he worked all those years for his daughters. It says that all of a sudden when he started multiplying all those sheep and, and the herd started multiplying, Laban got real upset with him. It says right then that his countenance changed toward Jacob and the sons, the other sons, Laban's sons, their countenance changed before uh, toward uh, Jacob. And you know what it says? Right in the next verse, the Lord said to him, get up, pack all your stuff and leave and go back to your own country. You know why? He didn't have no more favor. That was it. <laughs> they got mad. He was done there. Sometimes there's there's a point where you're done at a certain place. And, and that happened to me even one time in my job. I had worked somewhere for 17 years and I just, you know, the leadership and the person running the company changed hands. And all of a sudden, I just did not have the favor there with this certain person that was in charge because uh, he wanted me to work more hours. And this other boss, the main boss, had let me cut back my hours. But yet I was still working almost, you know, seven hours a day. But he just did not like my hours and he wanted uh, me to change them. And anyway, I could just tell I lost favor and I didn't understand it. And I was even talked to not very kindly and it hurt me. But I went home and said to my husband, what should we do? He said, well, you know what? We're going to pray and ask God what to do. He says, but I believe your time's up there. I believe it's time for us to stay, take a step of faith and you're to leave that job. And I just looked at him like, you must be off your rocker. Because in the natural, there was no way that we could make it without my uh, salary, both of our salaries. But we prayed about it. And I felt God say the same thing, that that's what we were to do. And my husband just said, you know what? When you leave, God will start bringing in other work. He's going to take care of us. He will bring in the work that I need to make up for this. And you know, that's exactly what happened. I turned in my resignation and they let me work through the summer until my kids got out of school so that we could find somebody and I could train them. I left there on very good terms. I did everything. I continued to work just as hard as I ever did. And, and blessed him and treated it like it was my own company. And, uh, and, and then I left. And it was the first time I had never, ever worked in my life. And I didn't even know how to act. And God did exactly what my husband said. He began to bring other business in to come along, you know, and uh, make up for what I, we didn't have out of my check, which was a miracle. So, you know, there, there's times. We, we look for God's favor in situations. 
Can you pray with the people? Yes, yes. Father God, we're just going to take a time to pray. First, I want to say if there's anybody out there and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord, I just want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father God, Father I, God I come to you as a sinner. I come to you as a sinner. I'm sorry. I am sorry. For not following you. For not following I turn now. I turn now. From the, these sins. From these sins. And I'm asking you, Jesus. And I'm asking you, To come Jesus, into my heart. To come into my heart. And be my Lord and Savior. And be my Lord and Savior. I confess. I confess. With my mouth. With my mouth. Jesus. Jesus. You are the Son of God. You are the Son of God. And I'm born again. And I'm born again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, Lord, I just pray that you would just feel... <laughs> Everyone that's prayed that prayer, fill them with the Holy Spirit and power to be of service to you, O oh Father God. And Lord, I pray for all those listening within the sound of my voice, and you're sick in your body today. I pray for healing to flow, and I pray for deliverance to flow in your situation. Father, heal those that are suffering physically in their bodies today. We take authority over sickness, and we speak the healing virtue of Jesus to go out and touch your body now and to drive out sickness and disease today, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that all those that are that need to be delivered right now from drugs, alcohol, uh, ungodly situations, Father God, uh, with men with men or women with women, ungodly uh, situations that God says in His Word is not right. I, I pray deliverance in the name of Jesus, that you would be set free in the name of Jesus from everything that binds you. Let the chains come off of you and be set free by the power of the living God to serve the living God. And Father, we thank you for ministering uh, to these people today, Father God. We thank you for touching them. I I pray for families and marriages to be restored in the name of Jesus, Father God, that 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 Lord, we come against divorce. There's some of you out there right now. You've even got papers being drawn up and God's going to step in and he's going to intervene and save your marriage in the name of Jesus. It's never too late. Don't give up. Don't give up in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for doing it right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Father, in Jesus name. God is moving, Bobby. He sure is. Praise God. Thank you for that message. That was such a blessing. If you would like a copy of today's program, just let us know for it. <clears throat> excuse me, any size donation, which is so appreciated because we need it to keep the program going. We will be glad to send you a copy of today's program. God loves you, my friend. He has a plan and a purpose for your life, yes. just like he had a plan and yes. a purpose for Joseph. Yes, amen. Whatever your situation is, it's not too late and it's not too dark for God. This is Bobby and... This is Melinda. And Frank operating our sound, saying, <laughs> My friends, God loves you. Yes, I'm talking to you. And so do we. See you next week. God bless. God bless you.